height of the body. No, no, it's a this woman is one seven. Oh, I she is one eighth, two. just like a man. Wow. Okay, so uh, you know there, there, you know, and there's and there's other signs too. Okay? You don't even see, you don't see photographs of the children when they're right. young. They, right. they don't show right. Michelle holding the, the small children. Right. There are there are no there are no photos. No. Oh, no, no, no photos. She okay. Attractive. Well, yeah. Well, you know. Did you ever see there are a lot of very attractive transgenders that once they put on women's makeup and then in the wig and whatever else, okay, or let their hair grow long enough that they don't I think the somebody wig should just paint them to get the real yeah. answer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. Now, now, let me ask you this question. If Bruce Jenner uh, went missing and they decided to put his picture on a milk carton, would it be a carton of half and half? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Claudia, you're next. No, no bad I, joke, but... What did, the, what did the Pope say about conservatism just recently? Uh, did oh, he, he say don't... something to, uh, for Six. people to come out of conservatism? Yeah, he's, he is a liberal. He is a communist. Mm -hmm. He is for the one world government. He's for a one world religion because he knows it will all be underneath Catholicism. They've been trying to do that for 15 years. They had they signed a bishop to have a world ecumenical council. They invited the leaders of all the different world religions. The only two that didn't show up were fundamental Muslims and fundamental Christians. Huh. Evangelicals and Pentecostals showed up. Okay, um, and that's what we are going to be going to. All right, um, James, you had, did you have a question? Okay, so, so, well, we're curious about. I saw a picture of uh, Michael's daughter Mala the other day, and she looks. Very much like Michael. I mean, was she conceived in a laboratory somewhere? Is that what you uh, no, I wouldn't say she's conceived in a laboratory. Also, also on some of the uh, pictures, and you know, she was on uh, uh, the DeGeneres program. Oh, uh, no. No. Uh, and uh, and uh, in in her slacks, you could see a male part. Yeah. For Trudy. Um, okay. They have photographs on the daughter. On, no, uh, on, on Michael. On Michelle. 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 Michael. Michelle. Michael. Michelle. Michelle. How okay. sick. And uh, uh, this is how far, see, America doesn't realize how far we oh. have dropped. You know, the, you know, people still think we're a Christian nation when we're nowhere near a Christian nation. That's part of why judgment's coming upon America. The last sign that God, the last thing that occurs before God's judgment comes upon a country from world history is when they accept sodomy as being legitimate. We officially did that last June 26th when the, the unsupreme court, supreme in their own minds, decided to uh, legalize sodomite marriage. That is the end of America. That, you know, we are fish. You know, take the, put the tombstone in Washington D.C. You know, the United States of America, born July 4, 1776, died uh, June 26, 2015. Yes. Um, none of y'all probably don't know this, but it's a song years ago. Years ago, um, the song called Rumors. In that song, it says, "Have you heard about Michael? They say he must be gay." And um, no, I haven't heard that song. Yeah, it's um, I I, I forget what it is though. But um, look at all these rumors, rhyming every day. Yeah. So yeah. Well, how long um, has that been? Michael came around. Um, in eighty-four. I was eleven years old. Yeah. Yep. So uh, anyway. Uh, we, uh, America is no longer a Christian nation. Judgment is coming. There is nowhere that God can move, can move Christian evangelism to be supported, have the money to support it, and the people to do it anymore. Another sign why, why uh, we, we're very close to the end of the tribulation period, the end of the age of grace and start of the tribulation period, I should say. Okay, finishing, maybe finishing this time. Uh, the commentary in verse 3. Uh, the question is, shall the unfaithful of Israel in the respect, in this respect, uh, alter God's faithfulness? Paul's answer is a classic. Uh, no, he can't. Uh, and, he, and, and he answers it in the next in the next two next two words of verse 4. God forbid. Yes, let uh, God be true, and let every man be a liar, uh, as it is written, that uh, each of you uh, might uh, be uh, justified uh, in your saying and might overcome when uh, each of you are judged. You know, for these and thou, you know, trying to change them and update the, update the wording for you. Uh, 
it doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter what we think. All that matters is right here in the Bible. Okay? You know, uh, uh, I talked with, uh, uh, what's her name, Kim? Um, uh, Pastor Tom's daughter. Uh, uh, yesterday, oh. I was trying. I was trying to get a, get a hold of Beth and see how she's doing. Uh -huh. Had a long talk with her, and you know, we were we were talking about her uh, passing up Bibles and tracts and whatever else that the pastor Tom wanted her to do. Wanted her to do it. You know, she was afraid to do it, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said to her, you know, uh, you know, be bold. You know, gave her gave her the Proverbs 28 one: be as bold as lions. And I said, you know, just, you know, offer it to somebody. When they say no, you know, all you have, you know, you know. If, if, if they want to get nasty, uh, just remember uh, Matthew 5.10, blessed is he who is persecuted for righteousness sake. You, know, you get a blessing in heaven. She, she liked that. <laughs> and I said, you know, and then you, you know, and, and you can, and, you know, to them you can tack on, uh, you know, the God of the Bible is real. You will be going someplace when you leave this earth, and you're going to be judged by the Bible. I don't want to see you go to hell. Here's your, here, uh -huh. once you find out, once you find out what, what, what God's standards are, because you're going to be judged by them. Okay. And that's, and that's you know, we're all going to be judged by this book. So God doesn't, it doesn't matter what we think. You know, the verse is, you know, oh, there, there is no God, so I go do whatever I want to do. Uh, that doesn't get rid of God. That doesn't get rid of his standards. That doesn't make him a, an unjust God. He's a just God who has to, who has to uh, have a, uh, uh, well, he has standards that every sin must be judged. Now, praise God, we have Jesus that takes care of that sin debt for us. But for those that are lost, they have to come for all their own. That's why in Revelation 20, verse 11, 15, it says the books are open. There's multiple books for everybody on their sins because they're so thick. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so this is an argument that was going on on amateur radio last week. There were people that says that we choose to follow God, and I said no, that... We are chosen. Well, it's a it's a combination. First of all, no, no man seeks God. Okay, we, you know he comes after us. Right. And then and, and he comes after everybody. Okay. Uh, and whether they accept or not, they have the choice. God won. God won the creation that chose him. The angels did not have a choice. Right. They were with him in one sin, and they were gone. Right. Probably didn't think before the fall. That's what happened to Satan and the other, you know, third of the stars, as it says in uh, uh, Revelation 12, 3 and 4, fell with him. You know, the third of the angels fell with him. They didn't have a choice. Because of Adam and his sin nature and God deciding to pass that sin nature through, you know, his genes, most likely, you know, one of the genes, uh, that uh, uh, we all have a sin nature and therefore we all need a Savior and we get to choose whether or not we want to accept. We are choosing to be with God, but he called us first. No one seeks after God. No, not one. No, not one. Okay? We, we don't seek after him. He sought after us. But as it says in 1 uh, um, uh, uh, Corinthians 6.20 and 7.24, we're bought with a price, which means we no longer own ourselves. He owns us. Okay? We are indentured servants. Even though uh, you know Paul says I'm, I'm a slave to Christ, you know he you know he he's deciding to be that, all right. Uh, but once we are saved because we have the Holy Spirit, we 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 will not completely fall away. God will take us out first. Okay. If we if someone if someone gets you know if someone decides that they that, you know we have eternal security, there's there's you know 65 70 primary verses and I got another 140 secondary verses on eternal security, that once we're saved, we're always saved. But it's from God's point of view, not ours. We don't necessarily know who's saved and who's not. Okay? You know, remember the, the squishy middle between the thumbs. You know, a lot of people are sitting there, and we don't, we don't know if they're saved or not. Because they, they, aren't, they aren't showing the fruit of the salvation. You know? And, 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 and God said, didn't Jesus say, I prune the tree? It doesn't bring fruit, I get rid of it? Okay? So if we are not, if we are, if we are just sitting back on our laurels and uh, not doing anything for God, uh, He might decide to trim you. Okay. And then if He doesn't trim you, the question is, are you really saved, or are you just been going through emotions? We aren't really going to. We, you know, God knows everyone's saved and who isn't. He also knows who's going to get saved and who's not. Okay. Uh, because He knows, He knows the end from the beginning. So. Uh, uh, we have to witness to everybody because we don't know who's going to get saved and who's not. All right? 
and we know most people are going to fall away, but what about, you know, and going to the clinics, we don't know which babies are going to be saved and which ones aren't, okay? Uh, but if we're not there, God doesn't work. It doesn't necessarily work, okay? Because he wants us to see him working to increase our faith so we will get out and do more for him. The parable of the talents, the five got five more, the two got two more. The one that had one hit it. And did God give it to, you know, and if God was, uh, was pro-union and everything got equal, one had five, he would have got, you know, he would have taken the five that the person got, the extra five he got, and the person had two, had two, he would have taken, taken one of the five and given it to him. And the person that had one, he would have given the other four. Sort of like communism. Okay, yeah. 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 Yes. Unionism is a form of communism. All right. Um, so he would have, he would have, you know, he would have done that. But God gave gave the one to the one that had ten because he was using them. He was doing them. He had more faith. And everybody has their own different levels of faith, and we get to choose what you know and what we're going to do for God. And God, and God, you know, uh, and God says you have the right to say no. Okay. Uh, but he has the right to take away blessings since you go to God. And we get to have him. We're probably all going to find out things he asked us to do that we didn't do. Okay? Uh, you know, after we were saved. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, this, this will be part of those tears is, that he's going to take away. You know, remember three times in the Bible it talks about God taking away the tears. It's not only from from lost friends and relatives that didn't make it to heaven and you know he doesn't want to remember them. But he doesn't want us to remember the things he asked us to do. He must be ashamed that this we didn't do it. Is that why he's gonna prevent us from seeing the tribulation that's gonna happen on earth? Uh, because that's gonna be terrible the final for us. the final seven judgments, the uh, 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 vile judgments, they're so vile that God is not going to have us doing them because I said people like me would be standing there cheering. Um, okay? So he does not want us doing that. But we know we see from heaven what's going on because we see the two witnesses being killed. That's the that's the seventh seal. And well, that's why there's space, uh, uh, half an hour, the space of a half an hour in heaven where everybody's silent watching what the world does. It will be worse than what happened with 9-11. When 9-11 occurred, most of the world was rejoicing. Okay, especially in the Muslim world, they were rejoicing. They were, they were. It was, it was party time. Okay, when the two witnesses get killed, because they're thinking in the in the uh, uh, in the human realm, visual realm, that it's all done because the two witnesses have been caught. You know, you, you weren't in the class. The two witnesses have been calling down the plagues that God was going to do. Okay, they think they're coming from the two witnesses. So when the two witnesses get killed, they think it's all over. That you know, that you know, that the trouble is done. That's why they're going to give presents as though it's like, dare I say, Christmas. Okay? Uh, of course, they don't believe in Christ, so, you know, of course, Christmas is a, is a false term anyway. So, uh, any, any other last questions before we, uh, and we only got three verses. <laughs> only got to the God forbid in verse four. I hope you learned a bunch. He's still forgetting it. Why did Isaiah and many, a few of the other prophets, why were they leaning like that? I don't know. I thought it was going to be raised up. That's where I started to answer that. I thought I saw something in there.